shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Very good. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Clap, Kuya! Zaki! <laughs> Sour. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Let's Plan Precap. This is a show where I look at your comments from the past episode and react to it. As you know, I missed making the recap for the last episode because my son was sick and I had no time at all to film. So this might turn out to be a rather lengthy recap because I'll be looking at two episodes worth but we'll see. I might cherry pick especially those that are the comments that are similar. But wait, before we begin, I'd like to point out that I've got a shop and if you're within Australia, within the non-restricted states, just head over to seriscapades.com slash theplantshop with dashes and you would see the stuff that I have for sale. On to the comments. So the first of the two videos was episode 89, which is how to propagate Echeveria from seeds. I actually uploaded this twice because the first time around uh, the video had some glitches in it. So I kept the original video but I had it unlisted so only those who have commented on it before would still be able to see it. The first one is from Jeff. I've been waiting a long time for this. I've grown quite a few types from seed, especially mesems, but not my own Echeverias yet. If you don't mind, one thing I'd mention is possible advantages of having the soil higher in the cells is it could provide more light if it's coming from an angle at all but also better airflow i can wait to see progress and learn more especially pollination love all the propagated videos jeff hashtag free plants hashtag i read an unexpected prequel memes <laughs> well the thing is this pretty much depends on your climate each climate would have its advantages and disadvantages. In my case, in my climate, I prefer uh, having the soil level not too high because I live in a temperate climate and it's not as humid as in the tropics, which means that I would have to water my, uh, my seedling trays more often. So if I have the soil level quite high, then that means that uh, there's more evaporation to, to that means that there's a higher chance of evaporation to happen because the sun would be able to hit it at an angle. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my case. But in other climates, it might make sense. So if it's more humid in your country, then higher might be better just to keep it from being excessively wet. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just try it and see what works for you. From Tere B. Could you do a video on how to get rid of bugs that kills the succulent plants? Apparently, some of my plants are dying due to these white bugs and I noticed white eggs around the root. Wow. Much thank you. Love all of your videos. Thank you and about that video, I might come out with a series on uh, troubleshooting with fungi, uh, excess watering, and even insects. But until then, I think the best advice that I can give you is that prevention is better than cure. So yeah, that's not so helpful. But what I usually do is to make sure that I remove all of the flower stalks because 
most if not all of the harmful bugs are there are attracted to it when there are flowers because there's nectar there's sap others are just simply attracted to the plant mainly because of the foliage of the um, juicy stems so you might not be able to get rid of the latter ones but for the, those that are attracted to the flower stalks the ones that are being carried around by the, the ants you could, uh, you could avoid them by removing the flower stalks from when up every great gardener ends a day with some dirt on the face <laughs> no worries about the glitch love the step-by-step -step instruction and rationale for each step looking forward to seeing if your results pinpoint the best time to harvest naturally fertilized seeds great video chuck yeah uh i was really i felt embarrassed when i saw the dirt on my face by the time i was editing a video no actually i noticed i only noticed it by the time i uploaded it i guess it's par for the course one cannot expect to play in dirt and not get dirt on their hands or on their face in my case. From Crafty Fox. I look forward to watching the series. I've grown from seeds I've harvested from Echeverry in the past and I made a mistake of letting the soil dry out and then up losing a lot of them. So it looks like you're getting the same problem as me because my main, the main thing that prevents me from being successful with these is uh, excessive drying. So yeah, especially since I'm doing this in the middle of spring which means that by the time the seedlings appear it's pretty close to summer if not summer already so drying out is a real problem by then i would need to create a more controlled environment for them i guess i would not like to keep them in the greenhouse but maybe what i could do is just keep them in that greenhouse and open the little flaps that open at the top that way they won't be too damp inside and there would be no risk or at least a reduced risk of fungal attacks now i'm switching over to the second upload of the same video this is the corrected version i've gotten uh, gotten several comments in here first is first is from lindsay brigans hi chuck very interesting i'll be looking forward to see what happens down the track your garden is amazing i do not know how you do it with family etc simple i have a very supportive wife <laughs> If not for that, then I would, I would not be able to sustain this pretty much. Next comment is from Always Growing Vlogs. Good to see you giving seed propagation another go. I don't think you mentioned it here, but you may want to document the temperatures at which you're able to achieve germination success. I know it's yet another variable to consider, but your soil temperature definitely comes into play when germinating any type of seed. Thanks for this tip, Frank, because I'm just, right now I'm just going by the ambient temp, because right now I'm just following your tip on the ambient temperature range that you gave me before. So, yeah, this is something that I could uh, tweak down the line once I get this batch working. So, yeah, we'll see. From Karen Lottering, seeds won't grow here where I live. I have been told they will rot before they will take. And I don't think I can wait for that long for the seeds to grow. You might be able to create an environment for it, but unless you're, but unless you're willing to put yourself through all of that work, eh, just skip it. <laughs> skip it for now. I know you're focused on your leaf propagations. Better work on those because you'll be getting better success from those right now, especially if you're not yet familiar or you haven't tried growing from seed before. It's I think growing echeverias from seeds are a lot more difficult than growing regular seeds so yep so not a lot of comments on that video it might be because i haven't shared it as much due to the glitch so we're now we're going to look at the second video which is how to manually pollinate echeveria flowers first comment is from jeff great video that looks easier than i thought question can a single echeveria be pollinated with itself i know it's a strange question because leaf propagation is so much easier but I only have one plant flowering right now and I want to try it. I love growing anything from seed and I would have some to trade, even if it's possible. So for this part, I'm not entirely confident, but I think echeveras are not self-fertile, which means that you would need two different plants, two separate plants for the seeds to be fertile. Yeah, if anybody else if anyone else knows the answer and can tell me otherwise, then please feel free to chime in in the comments. 
because I am not really sure about this part from Gwenot. Chuck, this is so exciting. Thanks for the flower anatomy refresher. I'm inspired to try this in the spring. Can't wait for the updates. Hope Zach is feeling better. Yes, uh, it's been quite a while since this video and Zach is feeling a lot better now. Thanks for asking. From John Sheffield, you could ask Deborah Lee Baldwin how long from start to finish it could take and I could remember some videos she did with the right family. Yeah, I might do this. From Marie Angel Perez, very interesting video. Thanks for the clear explanation, I'll do the same. But the thing is, I'm not sure if the insects or bees have pollinated the flowers before I get the brush. Yeah, this is why before the flowers even opened, I covered them with a paper towel. You might want to do something similar. You know, just protect the flowers before anything else can get to them. Yeah. From Aneta S. So cool, Chuck. Can't wait the results. Mm. From Retro Ray. Funny stuff, Chuck. Great info. Glad you like it, Ray. From Monolock. Hahaha, <laughs> I just literally bought a notebook for this just to write down what you told us. <laughs> I'm going to use this notebook for succulents and plants. I just bought a grade 1 notebook though. <laughs> as long as you can write, doesn't really matter. From Erika's succulents, I just cross-pollinated my Romeo and Lawi. Curious to see what happens. Oh. A champagne if successful. I'm not expecting much as I don't think I have enough experience in seed harvesting and growing from seed. But I'm hoping to follow along with what you're doing and hope to have better luck this year. Well, to that, all I could say is keep practicing because I had to do it several times before I got the hang of it, especially with my um, germination method because my first few attempts failed and they're mostly my fault. So yeah, keep trying. From Erika Olson, this video is awesome. I learned so much from it. Can't wait for, for the update. I might do an update soon because I've seen, uh, if you've been following my Facebook, I posted a photo of the germinated plants. I've, I've only counted about two sprouts, but that was uh, the early days. I'm not sure how many more sprouts it will be in the coming days. I'm hoping there's more to come out, but so far only just two. We'll see. From Zanizana66, gosh, I can't see myself doing this. Too many details to attend to. I hope you have success with your matchmaking. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's alright. From Lindsay Bringens, hi Chuck, awesome stuff. Look forward to the new babies. Lindsay, might be a while, but yeah, let's hope for success. From Karin Lottering, I removed the flowers because by the time I get to them, it's full of lice and ants. Sad, really. Yeah, I, get, I usually get the same problem, so what I usually do is before I even think about pollinating them, I set them aside while the flowers are still closed. That way, it would not attract anything, you know, any uh, harmful, uh, harmful insects. Yeah, that's what I did this time anyway. From Rose Gledhill, great video. Do you know how to stop ant invading pots? Such a pain. Any magic tricks out there? I only know of one technique, the technique that I'm using here, and that's to remove all of the flower stalks. Because the thing is, what ants do is they farm other insects, they farm aphids, mealybugs, and whatnot. They would carry these other insects into the flower stalks, because they depend on them to create the nectar which they are after. So without flowers, no ants to get there. Yeah. You might also use some uh, commercial ant repellents. There might be something in your hardware, local hardware store. You might want to have a look. And that's it for the recap. I've gone through most of the comments in here. Some of these are uh, very similar to the others, so I have left them out. The next episode would be touching on leaf propagation. It's not a refresher of my existing leaf propagation video, but rather additional supporting information that would help you with your leaf propagation attempts. And here's a preview. Okay, so here is an example. We're looking at an Echeveria Golden Glow, this green thing right here. And as you can see, it has several flower stalks already growing. Some of them, well, none of them have opened yet. They're still closed. So these are still quite young. You'll notice that some of these flower stalks are not like the others. Take for instance this one. It has thicker stems, bigger leaves. These ones are more slender, narrower. 
the leaves are longer, narrower, smaller, I guess. The leaves are closer to the color of the pedanko. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.